This is the iFish Band Tender Shoot Bait Finesse Reel. A lot of people compare it to the Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS, and with good reason. Today I'm unboxing the iFish Band Tender Shoot. Uh, this is a round reel. I got it right under 150 bucks after shipping, so it was like 142 plus $7 shipping. Uh, they're being sold for 139 at this point. I did order this a couple months ago. I got mine from China. When Bait Finesse Empire has them in, you know, you can get them from here in the U.S. and they, they ship very quick. Mine took several weeks to get here and it just sort of got shuffled back. Right off the bat, you know, when you look at the, the box, uh, it's, it's a very nice looking box. It's a feels a little bit more upscale than a lot of the CDM reels, like the, the Dark Wolf Ultra and all the clones that I've used. So this one feels like it's a little bit more premium packaging. It's a little noisier packaging. Get that out of here. Okay. So yeah, it says uh, I fish band on it. Tender shoot on the side. I did get a left hand model. So let's see what we got here. Got the little bag, velvety feeling, but it feels polyester. Okay, so what do we have here? Ooh. You know, I didn't really, it's, it's almost like a gunmetal blue. I didn't realize that it was going to be that color. Uh, it feels nice. There has been a lot of discussion on the, uh, whether these had bearings or bushings. It's supposed to have bearings in the handles and the initial run did not have them. So here's the thing about bearings versus bushings, especially in the handle. I mean, as much as you're going to be spinning it, does it really make that much of a difference? And there's a lot of people on the real maintenance side that would argue that bushings in some of these cases where you're going to get a lot of dirt and everything, the bushings actually last longer and hold up better uh, and they create less of a problem. So, uh, you know, I don't know, but the bottom line is if they advertise it has 11 plus one, it should have 11 plus one. And so the official word from iFishBand was that it was a manufacturing error uh, and it was just a mistake. It wasn't something it was supposed to. And they have offered free replacement bearings for anybody that, that got bushings. So this one, I, I'm not going to pull it apart, but just, you know, if you look at it from, you know, that's sort of what a bushing handle looks like versus something with bearings that usually is going to spin a little bit more. So if, if these are bearings, they're really bad bearings. So I'm going to say they're bushings. You know, it, it kind of feels nice. Feels like a really solid engagement on the on the thumb bar. So the brake adjustment is a little different on this. You sort of you sort of move the the entire plate this way. And it really doesn't move that far. All right. So this screw is starting just above the thumb bar, and when you turn it all the way to the other side, it's just sort of partially below. So it's not it's not as much as I thought it was going to be. You know, as far as like negative on, on the brakes, it's got a round line through. So it's eight to one gear ratio. It's got clicking, spool tension adjustment, clicking drag, and clicking drag star. The drag adjustment feels pretty progressive, so I can, I can feel differences. feels pretty smooth. You know, I can see why people are comparing this to the to the Conquest because A, they're both round reels. You know, it's 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 got a little bit of a similar feeling. And so I, I will definitely compare them as well. Uh, if you want to see a shootout, let me know. And I'll try to do something to, to put them side by side and, and sort of like what's the difference between a $140 reel and essentially a $400 reel. Now there's obviously some long-term durability. So one of the things Shimano did with theirs is they, you can see the machining lines. They didn't fully polish it. Whereas this one, they, they made the decision to polish it up and make it look just a little prettier. It's supposed to be machined, so I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I mean, we've done some really nice looking machine work in the past. These might be two different types of material because the color, you, I don't know if it shows up on camera. There's a slight color variation between the outsides and the center frame. 
So I don't know if they're different materials or if it's just a, you know, they were, of course they were run at different times. Mm. Mm. What's that? All the instructions are in Chinese. Oh, I originally thought that this was going to be held on with, with screws, but um, it looks like this little piece right here. You know, that's nice because this is designed so it doesn't come all the way out. It's spring loaded. So that's 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 a nice little design tip. So that allows us to pull out the, the, the spool. Sure it does. Quite a little tight tolerances, huh? Yeah, that was the hardest spool to get out of there. That's again, that could be an indication of some very tight manufacturing tolerances. So this spool, I mean, it feels very light in hand. It's supposed to be, let me see, what did they say? 5.2 grams with the bearing. So it's 5.3. So I, you know, my scale could be off by 0.1 grams. So that's that's actually pretty impressive. It's a solid spool, uh, and it's just got your typical porting on the inside has a capacity of 150 to 260 meters. Hmm. But again, you're not going to put nearly that much on if you if you want to and that seems that seems pretty optimistic. Uh, you know, it basically means I can put a, you know, almost an entire 300 yard spool on it. The uh, there's a lot of metal in this. So it 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 does weigh 210 grams. It looks like it's probably pretty easily serviceable. Let's see how hard this is to get back in. Okay. So the magnets in the braking are not removable, but you can see when you, hopefully you can see that when you turn the, the, the dial, you know, it does move the, just like all the other mag tracks brakes, it moves the, the magnets in and out. And it's not a huge movement. But that's how it works. So then that goes on there, and then it should just be push this in and tighten it up. All right. Oh, there's a so there's lock and unlock. So you turn it to lock, and then it'll tighten up. I didn't notice that. But so basically when you untighten it here, once that pops out, you can slide it to unlock. It's pretty nice. I like that design. Definitely not going to come off accidentally and there's no parts to lose. So, so they say it has, uh, you know, four kilograms of drag, which is what, like nine pounds. So it's, it's a lightweight drag. Uh, they do say it'll do down to one gram lure. So we'll give that a test. And, you know, so I'll be throwing this on one of the, the lighter weight rods, probably. I don't know, I'll throw it on something that matches up with whatever I have the, the Conquest on, which is, I think, one of the Kistler 3X rods. So I'll throw it on a Kistler 3X, and we'll see how it does. Heck, I might even take it out tomorrow. I'm going to go hit one of my favorite lakes, do some bass fishing. And so maybe I'll just throw it on whichever rod makes sense, and, and we'll try it out. But this is the iFishBand Tender Shoot. It seems like it's been hard for them to keep in stock. It, it seems to be a very popular reel with good reason. Like, a, you know, a few years ago, other than, you know, some of the, the Daiwa Millionaire series that needed to be somewhat reworked in order to be good for bait finesse, you had the Shimano Calcutta Conquest BFS, which was really the only production round reel that us mere mortals could afford. 
There's some stuff by Isuzu. You can get into modding the Abu Garcia 1500 and 2500 reels, uh, which will cost you hundreds of dollars. Uh, usually to get a good copy, you, you're, you're spending more than you spend on this just to get one to start modding. And then the parts are crazy expensive as well. I, there, there are guys that I know have to spend close to $1,000 and you see them for sale for $1,000. And so these are used modified reels. I think it's great to get a reel that looks like this that Sounds like it might have the performance characteristics for under 150 bucks. I don't know, we'll see. If this holds up, this could be one of the best performance values out there because it feels like quality. It, it's got a lot better feel than most of the, the Chinese reels that I've used. Uh, it, it looks nice. I, I have zero issues with the finish so far. That might be a plastic piece instead of metal. It's chromed, but it, you know, but that's a small detail. Uh, again, you're, you're, there's gotta be trade-offs when you're going when you're trying to create a reel that looks like a $400 reel that performs at some level, some percentage level of that, but you want to sell it for 140 bucks. So I like what I've seen out of it so far and it's, it's a good looking reel. So hopefully it fishes well too. If you want to see more of this reel, go ahead and subscribe because I'll be fishing it through the fall. Uh, and who knows? I mean, right now it's not one of those that I'm sort of looking at like, okay, I'll fish this a few times just to, so I can figure out where it fits in. I, I could see myself fishing with this a, a good bit, so we'll see how it goes this fall. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.